There's a pretty one, Ulysses. There it is. Mm. Oh. Oh. Mm. Was it good for you, Mikiko? It was great. Hello, BookTube. I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Here I am with one of my dear bookish buddies, Mikiko, joining us today from Halifax and for her inaugural appearance on my new series, Zooming In, where I meet up on Zoom with bookish social media luminaries oh, to, discuss, <laughs> to discuss articles about being a book nerd and books and writers. So here we are. Hello, Mikiko. Hi, Sean. So... I'm not going to ask who are you wearing, uh, uh, but who 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 were you spelling just now? Oh, that would have been "Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead" by Olga Tokarczuk. Nice library book. Was, <laughs> yes, and I was smelling my as yet unread copy of this German novella "Siblings" by Brigitte Reimann, and. Yeah, it smells like a brand new, brand new soft cover. It's a nice smell. How about you? How's your smell? Mine's smelling a little ripe. Okay, so yours is a library book. So, do you is. smell anything connected to a previous borrower? No. It smells like a library book, if you know what I mean. In terms of yeah, it's it's a bit older. Even the color is a bit yellow. So. Yeah. It's a popular yeah. book, so probably dozens of people have read it. <laughs> the reason Mikiko and I are going on about it is that that's the topic of this article. The article is entitled, On the Science of Biblioosmia, That Enticing Book Smell. And it is a column on the website interestingliterature.com by Dr. Oliver Curl. And he is writing about book smelling or smelling books, and uh -huh. he has coined a fancy word for it, bibliosmia, that uh, maybe two other people, since he coined it, have used. I'm not sure we're going to use it any further into this discussion, but it just means, does he actually define it? He does, I believe, as book smell. It's just a combination of book and smell. Book and smell. So smelling mm. books or book smelling. Yep. <laughs> what did you make of this article? What was your kind of, what's your general hot take or impression of what you read, Nikiko? Well, I, I thought it was interesting that he talks about the, the kind of chemical nature or the, the kind of breakdown of paper. He literally calls the paper dying, um, you know, and he talks about the smells that come out uh, from the paper as, you know, paper dying. Um, and so if, if you're somebody who's interested in the science behind that, especially the chemistry, I think that that's, that's quite interesting. He says that the smell is the process yeah. of the book dying. It's dying. Yes. It's going to die. But I like the idea that he frame like he uses it to frame, of course, the ebook versus physical book conversation. Yes. But I like the idea that the smell is something, obviously smell triggers memory and emotion. And he does also mention that, you know, books have a very distinct smell as they age. But of course, you know, like it, the book is also going to smell based on its environment. So, you know, if you've, if you're getting a secondhand book from somebody who was a chain smoker in their, <laughs> in their library, personal library, you're going to smell that. It kind of made me think of like wine and, you know, how, you know, as wine ages, it, it, it takes in all of the flavors from the cork or the barrels or whatever it's stored in and, you know, how that impacts the smell or, or the flavor of the wine. Um, so I was thinking about that. So maybe, you know, Maybe it's like a, a fine wine after it's aged <laughs> a few a few centuries. Well, yeah, well, he does say the older the book, the more interesting the smell. That new yes. books don't just smell like new paper. But I found this really amusing and uh, maybe kind of silly in the sense that I I have been known to smell books. So, are you a book smeller? I am. And it's the reason I chose this article is because <laughs> while I was away on a holiday just this past weekend, I came home, my partner had gone to a used bookstore, and the first thing he did was say, smell that. He opened the book, <laughs> put it in my face, and it just, it, it was that old book smell, the paper like decaying, and it was just, 
you know, it, there's comfort in that for me. I'm not going to lie, you know, and I don't mind old books. I don't mind secondhand books, you know, or third or fourth hand books, you know? So of course I just found some pleasure in it. So did he. So <laughs> I think when I open a book, I don't I probably nine times out of 10 don't smell anything. I'm, I'm not that I don't have a really sensitive nose, but mm. I have been, no, I do on occasion put it right up into my nose. Like we were doing uh, take a good whiff <laughs> and I enjoy that, but I, I, do it very infrequently yeah it's definitely not like the first thing that attracts me to a book right I'm not (laughs) oh that doesn't smell good if it smells good I think I'll pick it up I mean that's definitely not criteria but you know I get that it's a thing I do get that it's a thing I do know (laughs) that readers who for whom it's quite a thing some readers are real book sniffers there you go (laughs) You know, they'll they'll read the back cover and they'll, you know, do some research, but they also want to have a good whiff before they decide whether to buy it or not. So. Well, that's fair. And I mean, I, I get I get that with a brand new book, that's not going to be one of the features. So that's fair enough. Um, and I guess maybe a book collector might be interested in such things. But, you know, for for me, it's not the biggest deal. But I thought, I thought the article was interesting as well. <laughs> I thought it was very interesting. And like I say, yeah. kind of light and, you know, it mm-hmm. can make me think about this more. Like, for example, yeah. when you walk into a bookstore, do you smell the books as soon as you walk in? Can you smell books? I, I can't, but... I can't. But can I tell you, I went to the college, like there's an art college downtown here. And I walked in and it was quite warm that day. And as soon as I went up to the secondhand floor, which is all stacks, you could smell how old those books were. And it was so, because they didn't have air conditioning, it was a very pungent and like it was overwhelming. But at the same time, I thought, you know, if you're, if you're a student in a library, this just smells like it's it smells normal, you know, uh, like right. library stacks smell like older books. So it was very uh, nostalgic. I just got a whiff of university, <laughs> my, my days and like the stacks at like 1 a.m. trying to, you know, finish my research paper on time that for, you know, for the next day. So I do, I do find that, you know, obviously scent is tied to memory and emotion. So I could see where that part of the article was, you know, was taking place or, or that he had mentioned that I could understand why he had mentioned that. Uh, but I mean, it's definitely like I'm not going to go out and buy a an old book, you know, cologne or perfume. And, <laughs> and I believe you could if you wished. I think I bet you I could. Possible. I think so. I like the smell of a new book, but again, I don't <laughs> smell every new book that comes into the house because look, I wouldn't have time to do much. I wouldn't oh have time gosh. to do read. anything. Else. I'd be so busy smelling the book. Yeah. Have you ever had a bad experience with the smell of a book? I mean, no. No, but I I have to say with older books, I think my fear is always like, you know, when you see things that are kind of stuck to the pages or you see like the oil marks and those are kind of, that's, it's more visual or physical rather than smell. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody's uh, had some ketchup or mustard or whatever. Yep. (laughs) But the smell is usually not there. Um, I have occasionally bought used books that were musty because Mm. they had been not they hadn't been uh, kept in a good environment and they were a little yeah. damp or something. And that's, right. that's not a nice smell. No. And I it smells like vinegar, that, doesn't it? Like the, I can't remember. See, my, I don't oh, have a good go. memory for the smell. Oh, no. <laughs> smells trigger memories, but I don't have mm-hmm. a good memory about the, mm. my experience of smelling, if that makes sense. But the treatment for when a book is a little damp and musty smelling is to put it in a, a, an upside down cardboard box for a week or a few days with baking soil, baking soda, and maybe just baking soda. I forget. I've, oh, lovely. I didn't it, know It takes out a lot of that the bad smell, the musty oh, smell. Lovely. So, so that's good. <laughs> Have you ever seen anybody taking a big whiff of a book? And if so, how did you feel? I think, I think the last person I saw and remember seeing take a big whiff of a book was my sister. And I just thought it was weird. But then I thought, well, don't I do that as well? But she just took a big whiff of an old book that we had had stuck in the basement that just wouldn't fit on one of our family bookcases. And um, it was just odd. But then I thought, is it really that odd? Like it's old. I'm sure there's a smell to it. I mean, she must have bought it or she must have received it sometime in the early 90s and it had been stuck in a box in the basement. So I'm sure there was a distinct smell to it. So, but I thought it was interesting. After reading this article, I concluded that the smell of the book is not that important to the reading process for me. Right. Um, right. But I was interested also in that he's using that, as you alluded to a moment ago, as a way of weighing in on this really 
old debate about which is better, ebooks or physical books. <laughs> so take take that part of it and run with it. Thank you, Carol. Well, I thought it was an interesting conversation because I think the article is a few years old. He talks about how book sales of ebooks have gone down and and you know, I believe this is pre-COVID-19, but 2017, I think is roughly. I about. couldn't find a date, but maybe you well, saw the date that I didn't. Well, I, I saw some commenters. And they had commented around 2017. Oh, good, good for you. So I think that's roughly the date it would have been. It, it was published. That sounds right. Yeah, and and I thought that that was. I mean, I, I think at that time that would have been apt, and I suspect that COVID changed that a little bit. And I thought that it was interesting, you know, that his final take on the whole ebook versus physical book was physical books will always in terms of sales and popularity will always outweigh ebooks. And I mean, I'm, I wouldn't disagree with that based on, I mean, obviously this is not research, but based on what I hear. And even, you know, if I think about the people in my family and friend circles who read, most people either read physical books or listen to audiobooks. They've actually, <laughs> they're not interested in ebooks, which I thought was really interesting. Um, and even for myself, like I'll read ebooks, but it's definitely not my go to choice. And it's usually, there's usually a purpose for it. So I found that the article's kind of findings were relatively accurate. But then I did, I did check online to see, you know, how book sales, both physical and ebook sales, were in the past year in North America. And I mean, they're not, they're definitely not par. Um, but ebook sales are definitely not going down. They're still on the rise, but they're just not matching, you know, the sales of, of physical books, which I think is, I, I think that's not a surprise to, to most readers. I think that there are advantages or and disadvantages. There are, you know, mm -hmm. To to either one, and I mm -hmm. use both for different reasons. Um, if it's if it's much much cheaper, I yeah. will start with the ebook, and then if I love the book and I've read it on ebook and or audiobook, I always want a physical copy for my shelf yeah. if I love the book. Yeah, and that would also be the same with the library book. If I read a library yeah. a physical library book, I and I loved it, I have to have a copy of it for my shelf. Yeah, me um, too. And I know that uh, this article doesn't get into any of this, but uh, the, w when the argument surfaces about ebook versus physical book, I have heard people say that they can't immerse themselves as deeply into a, mm -hmm. in an ebook as, and I just don't relate to that at all. Some of my most profound reading experiences have been reading a book on ebook, that format. So I don't have any issues about that. So mm -hmm. I just, prefer the physical book as a bookish social media luminary, especially <laughs> a book a booktuber, I want to have the book to, mm -hmm. to show you. Yeah. But uh, yeah. a cover gift would do the same, probably. Yeah. But um, I'm a material girl. In a material world. In a material world. But I also uh, would never, I have nothing bad to say about ebooks, but... Yeah. And and I don't either. I and actually, you know, I have both a Kindle and a Kobo. Um, so, you know, I'm very spoiled. The the Kobo was my father's and the Kindle I got because I read arcs from NetGalley. And so they only uh, they'll only publish to a Kindle. Um, so I purchased it for that purpose. I guess my only complaint about an ebook is, you know, the cost, upfront cost is a lot more. So, you know, you really aren't allowing for people who maybe don't have the financial means. It's it's not necessarily the best option. Um, you know, that's that's all. Because I mean, of course, you can go to a little free library, you can go to your own library, you can go to a secondhand bookstore. Um, you know, the the prices of physical books, especially used or secondhand, is uh is much more affordable. So but and that's you know and that's very interesting because I've never spent money on a device specifically for e oh. reading ebooks. I started okay. it on reading them on my iPhone and I now do uh, on my iPad. So I've I never bought a, a, a Kindle machine or whatever. And, and never, okay. So, but I know that those are pricey. Yeah, um, they are. I think that you and I can agree, though, that we do have a slight preference for the physical book over the ebook. I do. <laughs> but that that preference has nothing or almost nothing to do with the smell of the physical book. No, not at all. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, not at no. all. So, no. So that's why I found this article interesting, but kind of didn't didn't really. It wasn't particularly relatable. Just interesting. No. No, 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 no. It's definitely not what's going to make or break the reason I buy a book or enjoy it for that matter. <laughs> so. And I don't think if you put a blindfold on me and, and and opened my favorite books one right after the other and the pressed other. them to my nose that I would be able to identify which book it was. No. There you go. I'm no. not that much of a biblio, biblios mania. Yeah. <laughs> You're not Sean the Bibliosmaniac? Maniac? Maniac? No, not yet. But, you know, things could change. Maybe this is the start of something. Early a days. new direction in my bibliomanic adventures. There you go. Mikiko, thank, thank you so much for chatting about this fun article with me. I hope you'll come back. Thank you. I do, too. Thank you.